Leur graph no black. Today we will talk about labor unions. It's sometimes also called trade unions. Labor unions or trade unions. So um, let us pick up from here. There's going to be a the outline, meaning of labor unions, forms of labor unions, history of labor unions, labor unions in Ghana, and then the functions of labor unions. Now, what's the meaning of labor unions? It's an organized group of workers or groups of workers within an organization. According to Joshi 2015, it can also be considered as a continuous association of um, wage earners for the purpose of maintaining or improving the conditions of their working lives. Under the Labor Act 651, a trade union means any association of workers, the principal purposes of which are to promote and protect their economic and social interests. So sometimes labor unions comprise workers of different organizations involved in similar activities. We'll look at particular examples and you will know that you even, um, you even have knowledge on what labor unions are already. So traditionally, the main aims of labor unions have been to negotiate with employers on behalf of their members in an attempt to secure better wages and salaries for their members and also a better working conditions for their members. <clears throat> Labor unions are the sole institution representing workers' interest in the labor market so far. Yeah. So what are the forms of labor unions? What are the forms of labor unions? A company union or a house union that represents interest of only one company and may not have any connection with other labor unions. That is one form. Another form can be a general union, industrial union, uh, workers in a particular industry. So this one is not just a particular firm, but several companies but who are in the same industry. Let's say banking industry. There can be banks, different banks, Zenith Bank, Cassis Bank, um, Universal Merchant Bank, GCB Bank, all are different banks, but they are in the banking industry. So if the bankers form a union, it is the second form of labor union. And the third form is a craft union that represents skilled, workers in a particular field, such as carpentry or welding. So for instance, in Ghana, we have the dressmakers union. So um, we have different, different, different unions. If carpenters come together to form a union, that is also a, a type of labor union. Now let's look at the history of labor unions. The history of labor unions. The origin of labor unions dates back to the 18th century. That is in the 18th 1800s, 1820, 1840, there. And the Industrial Revolution in Europe. During the Industrial Revolution, there was a high surge of new workers into the workplace that needed representation. In the issue of America's trade and labor unions, the most famous union remains the America Federation of Labor, um, nicknamed AFL. Founded in 1886 by Samuel Gompers. At its pinnacle, the AFL, the AFL had approximately 1.4 million members. So it was more of a federation of workers who are in industries that are, you know, are involved in trade, different, 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 different uh, workers coming together, a very big labor union. In Ghana, we have the Trade Union Congress. We have some labor unions you, you appreciate. At its pinnacle, the AFL had approximately 1.4 million members, so many members. The AFL is credited with successful negotiation, wage, increase, wage increases for its members and um, enhancing workplace safety for all members. As we said earlier on, the objectives of these labor unions are to negotiate for their members to receive very good wages and salaries and also better working conditions. So the AFL was um, successful in negotiating for high wages and also to enhance the, 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 work safe, the, the workplace, the working environment, the working conditions and safety of its members. 
know, unionization rates in USA starting dropping in the mid 1960s with the decline as a rating in 1980. Because by the time being a member of the labor union or being one of the key members was quite dangerous because as you agitate for high wages on high salaries, your employers can earmark you for dismissal or they can fire you because you are threatening their work. If they pay you more, their cost will go high and their profit will come down. Okay, so by 2010 in the US, only 11.9% of civilian workers were unionized. It, uh, it has declined drastically. The phenomenon of the vanishing union is even more evident if we look at the fraction of unionized workers in the private sector. Only 6.9 of workers in the private sector are now unionized. As for the private sector, because it's owned by individuals, they, um, they can easily fire you if they see you as a threat. According to the Department of Labor, the 2015 union membership rate was 11.1%. And the number of workers belonging to unions was 14.8 million. Okay, let's just move on. The number of workers have, uh, the number of union workers members have declined. But let's just move on. Labor unions in Ghana. So in Ghana, we have the Ghana Trade Union Congress. I don't know if you heard of it. TUC, TUC, Ghana TUC. It was launched in 1945 at the National Center of Trade Union. The major objective of the TUC was leading the rest of organized labor in protecting collective bargaining rights as well as in policy intervention concerning labor market and other national issues. So the TUC is supposed to intervene to bargain for their members so that their members receive a better compensation for their work. So it began with a total number of 6,030 belonging to 14 affiliates. That is how the TUC began in Ghana. The political uphills of the 1950s up to independence in 1958 provided the atmosphere for a group of unions. So many unions fell out. By 1958, when Ghana TUC completed a major round of organizational renewal, the over 80 house unions who made up its affiliates were restructured into 24 affiliates. The number of affiliates has changed as a result of amalgamations and withdrawals. And today, there are 18 affiliates with varying sizes, ranging from unions with less than total membership of 1,000 to those with membership of well over 40,000. Excuse me, please. Great, let's, let's move on. So, the affiliated trade unions are, are so many. I already, I already mentioned names, I'll just mention some few. We have the Ghana, Ghana Mine Workers Union, those in, in, in mining, construction and build, uh, building workers union. GPLTU, can you tell me the full meaning? Ghana Private Road Transport Union. We have many other unions that are affiliated. Great. So we will just, so these are just um, 18. Now let's look at the functions of labor unions. What function do they perform? As mentioned earlier, they negotiate for better remuneration, that is, better wages and salaries. And also, they, they negotiate for working conditions to be improved, the welfare and safety of workers to be improved. So, um, if the working environment is not a safe place, the labor union will raise their voice. They protect mem members also against unfair practices. You know, according to the labor law, you can't just get up and start your work up without any reason. The labor union will take you on. They also try to ensure security of employment. So, um, you 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 are if you are, you are employed permanently and your employer employer wants to sack you he must pay you a very huge compensation 
because of that, employers are not enticed sacking people just without basis. So these labor unions, they have great lawyers who can stand in for you when your employer is not treating you well. And it's as if your, your job, you can lose your job anytime. So they help you to have job security. They regulate relations between workers, its members and the employer. They ensure that the relation between the, the members or the workers and the employer is a good relationship, not um, uh, someone who is always sexually harassed by his boss. No, they, they will step in and fight for you. They also take collective action to enforce the terms of collective bargaining. So now, labor unions, they form, um, a tripartite committee with the government. So government here, the labor union here, and uh, another uh, probably, let's say, um, so your employer, if the government is not your employer, this committee sits down and then they bargain. Sometimes it takes a very long time for them to finish bargaining. Labor unions can sometimes choose to go for, on, on strike or to go on demonstration for their voice to be heard for a table to uh, be set for bargaining. They do all these with this collective action, they do it to ensure that their members enjoy, they, they receive better remuneration, they have better um, uh, job security, working conditions are improved and all others. So they engage in collective bargaining. And also they raise new demands on behalf of its members. So probably, its members are not receiving some things they think it will be needed. For instance, if you are working in a company that does not give you transportation allowance, but you travel from a very far place, a labor union, though the company has never given transportation allowance, the labor union can come in for you and negotiate with your employer that it is very, very important for you to give this worker transportation allowance. So that is also one function of, of, of labor unions. Okay. They also help settle grievances, their grievances. If there are grievances amongst their members, they settle it very well. If there is any grievance, if there is anything, any issue, any problem, quarrel, they, because it's a union with authorities, they help settle such grievances. They also sometimes perform social functions and social welfare activities and discharging social responsibilities. So, excuse me, sorry. So, um, a labor union, a labor union can um, organize itself and uh, build a public toilet, um, can, can organize itself and uh, probably build a canteen for its workers. Yes. There's one labor union in Ghana called the NAGRAT. There's another called NAT, NAT Jane, and it, the Ghana National Association of Teachers. Oh, they, they do a lot. They do a lot and sometimes uh, engage in some corporate social responsibility that benefits the economy as a whole. They also perform political functions, helping the political party in enrolling members, collecting donations. So a political party, sometimes some of these labor unions are affiliated to some political party. And um, they, they can help that political party to enroll new members, pushing their members into this political party so that uh, when the political party comes into power, they can have their grievances met. They also have fraternal and extra mutual functions. It's not really um, classified as one of the major functions, but for instance, um, they can cover uh, providing financial and non-financial assistance to members during the periods of strike. Well, you, when, when you're on strike, you are not supposed to be paid because you're not doing any work. So probably, with the funds they've got it through their dues and others, they can provide some money for their members to cater for them because they are not receiving any salaries from their from their employers. So these are about 11 functions of labor unions. There can be more. Um, it's always good as a student to read beyond what you've been taught. So you can just explore more for yourself. Thank you so much. I'm waiting for your questions. Um, don't consider it too simple. Just go through, uh, ask yourself, do you understand every term? Do you understand every function? Yeah, we, this is not the end of labor unions. Um, next week, we'll move on to uh, some particular 
functions of labor unions like collective bargaining, we will look deep into it. But please ask your questions. Ask your questions on WhatsApp. Um, I'm always ready to answer you. I believe you enjoyed the lecture. Thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time. Bye.